Here, let's solve a Cauchy-Euler equation. x squared y double prime plus xy prime minus y equals 0 with uh, two-point boundary conditions, y of 0 equals 0 and y of 1 equals 1. So this is a Cauchy-Euler equation because the y double prime term is multiplied by x squared, the y prime is multiplied by x, and the y it has just a constant here. So because of the uh, nature of this equation, we can try uh, to solve this by letting y of x equals a power law, x to the r. And the advantage of a power law here is that when you take the derivative, you drop down um, one power of x, and then because of x squared and x here, you restore that power. So with this substitution, x to the r will cancel out of the equation, and uh, we can cancel it. So the second derivative then will give us an r times an r minus 1, and then we'll have an x to the r which cancels. And the uh, first derivative will give us an r and then we'll have an x to the r which cancels, so plus r, minus the function itself, um, which will be x to the r which cancels, and this will be 0. So we end up with an equation that depends only on r and not on x, and if we rewrite this, this is a quadratic, r squared minus r plus r is 0, so r squared minus 1 equals 0, and that uh, has two roots, r equal plus and minus 1. Okay, So now we use the principle of superposition, so we found two solutions of the form y of x equals x to the r, and we can combine them um, by multiplying each by a constant and adding. So if we do that, the r equals minus 1 is a 1 over x, so we get a 1 constant divided by x, plus the r equals plus 1 is an x, so plus a second constant times x. Okay, And now we need the uh, two initial conditions, the, not the initial conditions, but the boundary conditions y of 0 equals 0, and y of 1 equals 1. So let me write that down here. y of 0 equals 0, y of 1 equals 1. And move this up. And now we apply these uh, boundary conditions. So y of 0 equals 0. This term is 0, but this term you have division by 0, so that goes to infinity, and that's not pretty. So we need this term not to be there if we're going to satisfy y of 0 equals 0. So y of 0 equals 0, then we'll imply that this term is absent, so c1 is equal to 0. And then finally, y of 1 equals 1, the last boundary condition. That will mean uh, y of 1 is equal to c2. So y of 1 is c2, and that's equal to 1. Okay, so we've used the two boundary conditions to get the two constants. So we get our final solution, then y of x is equal to x.